Hi, I'm Ozzy IoT. It's been a while since my last video. Um, the last two were progress videos of this project, which is a controller for a LED based neon sign. If you've seen my previous video, it showed the program operation without much explanation. The project is a sign for a shop involving eight distinct lighting channels. Uh, on the breadboard, uh, the eight LEDs can comprise the different uh, lighting channels. As it runs through its sequence, you'll notice that two things. The last LED flickers before coming on. My way of mimicking a, a faulty neon tube. Um, also, each, each cycle, the LEDs briefly turn on and off at random, like that. Um, both of these are intended to draw attention to people passing by. The, um, the random display will only occur about every five minutes or so, but the, the um, flickering last digit will be happen every time. This is one of the LED uh, tubes. I call them tubes. It's really uh, uh, like a silicon tube. Um, they come in a range of colors. The ones I've got are uh, 10 meters long. Um, the strip's quite opaque to disperse the light, but, uh, but inside um, there's a bunch of LEDs on a printed strip, circuit strip along here. The LEDs are about one centimeter apart. And they're grouped in three. Um, so there's three LEDs plus a, a resistor, and then they connect up to a, a bus which ultimately comes out as the wires at the end. Um, these wires are um, pre-attached, but on the back of the strip, you can see these, hopefully these um, black dots. That's, those are points that you can cut the strip and you then have to join your own wires back into it at that point. Um, I haven't tried that yet, but uh, it looks kind of delicate because there's lots of stuff that looks as though it would actually melt. So um, deal with that in, in time. Um, the tunes draw about 200 milliamps per meter. For all, the, the, for all but the shorter segments, this would be way too much for an Arduino to drive directly. For this reason, we need to um, use two um, quad uh, MOSFET boards, which look like this. Um, I'll zoom in on that in a sec. Uh, I'll also include information about the, those boards and where to get them in the description. This is a close-up of the board. At the bottom are the three pin connectors for each channel. Um, next up is a four-way uh, optocoupler just to provide some decoupling. And then the, uh, the MOSFETs. And it's difficult to see here, but for each MOSFET, there's a LED beside it. And that indicates the, um, the drive to the MOSFET uh, after the optocoupler. And then at the top, we've got the high voltage, in our case, 12 volt uh, section. So we've got input here from whatever the power supply is. And then uh, two outputs, positive and negative, for each of the channels. On the underside of the board, you can see that the power connectors are, have quite chunky sort of traces associated with them. Um, down the bottom, where the inputs are, each one is actually marked as minus, plus, and S for signal. Um, looking closer, the minus is actually connected to the, are actually connected together. They're also um, commoned up to everything else on the highest tension side as well. So the optocoupler only decouples the signal from the high voltage. It doesn't decouple the earths. Um, the other thing that of note is that when you look at the, the plus uh, closely, it's actually not connected to any anywhere for any of these. Um, and looking at the circuit diagram, 
uh, the input has the the ground, the plus VCC, uh, as well as the signal, and the VCC doesn't actually go anywhere. So, for our for for this project, I'm not actually going to use the plus at all. I'll just use the uh, um, one of the grounds from one of the ports, and then a signal for each of the ports. Uh, on the other side, there's the high voltage input. Um, the positive goes to VPP, which also links to VPP here and directly to an output. The switching is all done on the negative leg. So this is where we hook everything up. I'll start with the wire for the high voltage source. Um, so now I'll, I'll leave the disconnect from the lab supply at the moment and connect up the, uh, the control wires which I already have plugged into the, the breadboard. Um, again, I'm only using one ground and that's the black wire. Um, so that goes into there. The white wire is one of the signals. And then there's also a brown wire, which is one of the signals as well. And hopefully I've got them into the right slots. Uh, and then it's just a matter of connect up the lab supply. And check everything looks kind of okay. So now everything's connected, I hope, correctly. Um, there's the moment of truth when I switch it on and hopefully the smoke doesn't escape. Anyway, we'll see what happens. Um, the lab supply is already on, providing the 12 volts to the MOSFET board. All I need to do is switch on the um, Arduino. And that's what it's meant to do. Um, so you actually see really all three cycles going on. Except for some strange reason it's not going through the crazy cycle. It did earlier. I'm on, that's very odd. Oh, there it is. Well, that's it for this video. If you found it useful, please like and subscribe. Um, upcoming videos include the progress of this project, as well as teardowns or peak inside of some devices. Um, but anyway, that's it for now. See you next time.